Thank you for joining us for this month's Virtual Curators Tour. I'm Jenna Gilley, Associate Curator of Exhibitions at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art, and I'll be your tour guide. Today we'll be looking at the exhibition, Indiana Waterways, The Art of Conservation. The Indiana Waterways Project is the innovation of five Hoosier artists born from the desire to use a historic lockdown caused by a worldwide pandemic to capture, in art and words, the growing urgency of environmental inattention. Painting began in the late summer of 2020 and continued through the spring of 2022. Despite recent conservation efforts, many of Indiana's 65,000 miles of rivers, streams, and tributaries are in a fragile state. In fact, some remain unfit for human contact. This traveling exhibition, accompanied by a 200-plus page art book featuring essays on conservation, along with community forums and civic discussions in underserved communities, is designed to draw attention and to build awareness of the need for increased waterway restoration. The project strives to provide scholarly standards through deep analysis, creative reflection, and historical insight of indigenous and other ethnic communities along Indiana's waterways. The artists, John Kelty, Kurt Stanfield, Evan Waters, and brothers Dan and Tom Woodson often painted the same waterways. However, each found their own inspiration and results using three different mediums, oil, watercolor, and pastel. Indiana Waterways elevates the beauty of the state's rivers, streams, and tributaries while educating and inspiring the necessary work to ensure they will still be a part of the landscape for future generations to enjoy. In curating this exhibition, our staff decided to divide the gallery into sections, with each area dedicated to a single artist. On this tour, we will be looking at one work by each artist to hear about each of their experiences and learn more about their unique styles. First up is Dan Woodson, whose realist style is the most traditional of the group. Woodson is an oil painter from Muncie, Indiana. Originally a master sign painter, Woodson came into the realm of fine art in 1994 after falling in love with landscape painting. He paints in the tradition of classic Indiana landscape, which features tranquil scenes of nature with an impressionistic hint, similar to the Richmond group and Brown County traditions. His color blindness has become a signature asset that allows interpretation of minute tonal differences in landscape scenes, which others, influenced by color, might overlook. Dan Woodson's sensitive approach to landscape painting can be seen in St. Mary's River, Fort Wayne, Allen County. St. Mary's River is a tributary of the Maumee River in northwestern Ohio and northeastern Indiana. Prior to development, it was part of the Great Black Swamp, which extended from Lake Erie to Fort Wayne. Locals may know that St. Mary's River is one of the city's famous three rivers joined by the St. Joseph and the Maumee. Dubbed the Glorious Gate by Miami Chief Little Turtle, the confluence of these waterways formed a unique geographic feature which drew Native Americans, and later European settlers, to the area for thousands of years. This tranquil landscape depicts a worn trail to the important waterway. Devoid of telling signs of modernization, this scene has a timeless quality. One could imagine a native settlement nearby when the area was still called Kikianga, or just as easily expect to see a kayaker drift past. The painting's subtle shifts in light are a testament to Woodson's ability to sensitively capture tonal shifts despite his color blindness, which according to Avon Waters, is so severe that Dan has had to memorize the names of his paint to choose the right colors. Next is Dan Woodson's brother, Tom. He began painting in 1998 after seeing his brother working in the studio. Since that initial encounter, Woodson has painted avidly for more than 20 years, often working alongside Dan. His work mixes the classical, naturalistic style of Indiana landscape painting tradition with a looser, energetic approach. Here in Wabash River, Carroll County, Woodson pays homage to one of Indiana's most iconic waterways. The longest river enclosed almost entirely in Indiana, the Wabash River extends across the state. It is the State River of Indiana and is the subject of the state song On the Banks of the Wabash Far Away by Paul Dresser, who fondly recalled growing up beside the waterway. 
perhaps more than any other tributary, the cleanliness of the Wabash is paramount, as it and its connecting rivers and streams provide drinking water to 72% of Indiana counties. Tom Woodson has captured the beauty of the Wabash's rocky banks and sunlit foliage with his signature loose brushstrokes in this oil painting. While from far away, one might think that the painting is simply composed of green, blue, and tan. Upon closer inspection, we can see that Tom has actually used an amalgamation of every color on the color wheel. The tree's foliage is created with many tones of yellow, moss, teal, and at times hints of fuchsia. The Wabash's rocky shore likewise features dozens of unique colors, from salmon pink to slate blue to a cool mauve. This sensitivity to color makes each one of Tom Woodson's paintings engaging. Following the Woodson brothers is Rosedale, Indiana-based artist Kurt Stanfield, who returned to painting during a seaside vacation in 2018, following a 30-year hiatus. The resounding reception of that small painting lit a fuse that grew into a burning passion, driving Stanfield's retired life. For this project, Stanfield took a unique approach. Using a drone, he captured and painted aerial shots of the waterways and vistas that most never see. One of such works is the settlement, White River, Davies County. After scouting out an interesting curving section of the White River on Google Maps, Kurt Stanfield grabbed his painting gear and headed south. What he found was not as expected. A gravel road led to a private little settlement of cabins built on stilts. To avoid possible trespassing, he knocked on the door of one homeowner, who explained that he had lived alone there for over 20 years. Discovering that Stanfield was a painter, the homeowner enthusiastically gave the artist permission to drive farther back on the property, leading to the artist's view of this scene. Stanfield's aerial view of the settlement features a forked section of the White River, which features flat farmland on either side, a bank of barren trees on the right shoreline, a few scattered houses, and a roadway running directly through the composition. The combination of this waterway with its rural setting is a testament to the integral parts of Indiana's waterways with the landscape. Rivers provide irrigation to nearby fields, drinking water to Indiana residents, and peaceful respites from bustling city life. As the artist remarked, I understood why he had been there for 20 years. It felt completely apart from society. Next is local Fort Wayne artist John Kelty, who works exclusively in watercolor. Unlike the other painters in this exhibition who focus on rural landscapes, Kelty examines primarily urban scenes. The Indiana Waterways project pushed the artist outside his comfort zone to find the specific, subtle qualities that make each waterway unique. In the mighty Ohio, Ohio River, Posey County, John Kelty combines his skills of capturing the industrial landscape with nature. A large barge paddles up the wide Ohio River to a distant power plant, relaying the long-standing correlation between Indiana's waterways and the state's industry. Waterways were the first highways of our nation. Native American villages were centralized along key rivers for quick access to food, water, and transport. As European Americans began to settle their own towns, they followed suit, noting the indispensability of rivers for the trading and commerce to other cities. Since the implementation of the steamboat in the early 1800s, the Ohio has served as a key link from the Midwest to other parts of the country. While today we have many modes to transfer goods long distances, rivers are being reconsidered as a primary resource in diminishing transport-related emissions. Finally, we will be looking at a pastel work by Avon Waters. Waters is a pastel and acrylic artist from Converse, Indiana. He grew up isolated on a small farm near Amboy, Indiana, population 373. Nature was his first friend and art his first passion. Plant biology and painting classes at Indiana University Bloomington and Indiana University at Kokomo honed his skills and unceasing love for wild spaces. Unlike his counterparts, Waters is interested in capturing the mood of a scene rather than its strict appearance. He states, My art is a response to atmosphere and emotion more than it is an impression of light. 
It represents my emotional responses to atmosphere, vibrations of sounds, and harmony of design. I try to paint the air around a thing more than the thing itself. Everything can be in harmony, both visually and audibly. In Moonlight Sonata on Olean Road, Raccoon Creek, Ripley County, we can see this interest in the scene's moody, diffused atmosphere. A bridge forms the main focal point of the picture, surrounded by clouds of colorful trees, which recede into an orange sky. It is hard to determine what time of day is being depicted. This was a conscious choice by the artist. When sitting by this four-arched stone bridge, titled Friendship Bridge, in Ripley County, Waters was taken by the thought that each stone comprising the structure had to be hauled to the site and specifically engineered to interact with the water. He imagined what it would look like on a moonlit night. As a result, his sunset painting became a nocturnal tribute to the timeless structure, saluting its constant ability to endure day after day. Thank you for joining me on this virtual curator's tour. We are so pleased to host this outstanding traveling exhibition featuring several of our local artists. We are the only venue to host this exhibition in its entirety. To see all 100 fascinating works, each with their own unique tales, I encourage you to see Indiana Waterways, The Art of Conservation at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art before it closes on March 19th.